I love good music. I like to sit back and enjoy the groove. That's kind of what I do here at the Royal Channel. My job is to provide the groove, but every good song needs a melody and somebody who can tie it all together. Here at the Royal Channel, we have both. Meet me on the other side of this groove and I'll introduce you to some of the band. You probably heard me say over and over that the Royal Channel is a great way for you to get your message out. But not every producer comes with their own message. A lot of our producers are helping our mission by creating a show where they come looking for you to hear what you have to say. Here with me on Royal Profiles is Melody Trice, producer and host of the Melody Trice show. Welcome to Royal Profiles. Mm, thank you for having me. No problem, no problem. Um, first, I'm going to find out a little bit about you. We're going to show a, a clip of your show. We're going to talk about your show, and then we're going to talk about the Royal Channel and how it all comes together. Awesome. And that kind of gets into the whole groove because we provide the groove. You're the melody. Wow. Okay. So, uh, who are you? Where are you from? Well, I'm originally from Century, Florida. Where is um, that? On the Panhandle of Florida, okay. like right beside Pensacola, Florida. Uh -huh. So, have you ever been to the Navy base down there? Then you ride in the neck of woods where I'm from. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what? How did you? When you were there in Pensacola, Florida, were you always like, I'm going to be a host. I'm going to be a star. No, you know, actually, I did hair for like forever, so um, it definitely. Well, thank you for the star part. I like, I really like blew my mind. But um, no, I actually did hair, and I always felt like I would do something with the brain. Mm -hmm. So it was either going to be a brain surgeon or do hair. A brain surgeon or do hair. Okay. <laughs> Literally, I actually just like went to school from ninth grade, where you were actually. Um, when I would have graduated from high school, I would have been a junior in college and then huh. go to med school. But anyhow, ended up doing hair, and so that was a passion of mine for a very long time mm -hmm. um, to make women beautiful. So okay. that's what I did. And at some point, you came to California. Yes. Okay. I moved to California in 2013 uh -huh. and um, actually started doing some acting and different things like that. And one of the things that um, someone said to me, they said, Melody, you talk a lot. And I was like, uh, what else is it to do? And they said, you should have a talk show. Uh -huh. And I never actually thought about it, you know. But you know, you're always trying to figure out what your purpose is. And I was like, I love to talk, I love people. Why not have a talk show to talk okay. to people? Yeah, you do like to talk. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you do a good show. And I have noticed when you do your interviews that uh, you, you come off as very natural. So you, are, you clearly love people. Yeah. And you also give advice sometimes. I see you like when you, you get into it, you like you really care about the guests that come on your show. You want to help them to promote whatever it is they're talking about, show their talents. And then you, you kind of tie in a little, hey, you should try and you know, we should come together. And it just it feels, feels good. Oh, my God. Well, you know, what? I really believe in life being unlimited. And so the purpose to me of my show is to showcase people so that they can show other people that they can live life unlimited by whatever they're doing in their career. Mm -hmm. um, somebody else is watching the show that actually want to do what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So it inspires them. And then the person sitting in that chair that I'm interviewing, I want them to know that they can do even more than what they're doing right now. You know, okay. so that's the ultimate goal. So did you do any of this before 2013, before coming to California? Uh, or did you, you just start, you hit the ground in California, it's like, I'm going to go sit in front of some cameras? Well, yeah, for that purpose, yeah. Okay. I've never did that, but I did public speaking. Mm -hmm. So I used to do a lot of reenactment of, um, I did a lot of things in Black History Month, mm -hmm. and so um, I did a lot of that. Okay. So you get here in 2013, you decide to do a show, and it, so that's four years ago, four, going on, yeah, about four years ago. And at some point, you decided to take it to the next level because you were doing stuff before you actually got to the Arroyo Channel already. Yeah. So t tell me about that transition. Starting from when you get here, what was your journey to get to your the Melody Trice show? Well, actually, I started school in 2015 mm -hmm. and um, East San Gabriel Valley ROP. Mm -hmm. And I took video production classes. And mm -hmm. so I took editing classes and my teacher, uh, Michael Cote, he actually pushed me to say, Melody, have your own show and call it the Melody Trice Show. And I was like, that was a great idea. And so I started to do that and I put it on YouTube and people started liking it. People started um, actually subscribing to the YouTube channel. And that actually motivated me even more because people actually wanted to be on the show. I was like, yay, mm -hmm. let's do this. And then someone else, um, Robert Gisson, he brought me to Pasadena Medium. Mm -hmm 
which I never even knew existed. It was like this gold hidden. And when I got here and I, I met Aaron and the different people that works here, and I knew that it was uh, a possibility for me to be able to put my show on. Okay. And so that's pretty much how it happened. All within a year time, it actually went from from being just on YouTube to, to being on the Royal Channel. Okay. Uh, we actually have some, uh, some clips of your show that we're going to show. We're going to take a look at that so the audience can see what your show is. Awesome. And when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about your show. So let's go ahead and take a look at some clips from the Melody Trice show. Awesome. Hello, everyone, and welcome to my show. I'm Melody Trice, and I'm super excited that you decided to watch the show today. You know I'm all about Life Unlimited. The volume on Aux 1 of the show. Zaina, Juliet, welcome so much to the show. Thank you, and I'm so excited <laughs> to be here. Thank you, thank you. You are amazing. I love way. you so much. Thank you. Thank I you for you coming. Well. Thank you. It's like a pleasure to have you here. I'm very honored. Because I really want to talk to you about girl power and the movement that you're doing for so many amazing people. So let's talk about that, the girl power movement. The girl power movement is something that I started a long time ago as a child um, in the entertainment industry as a singer, you know, where females are always pushed to the back no matter what, in school, all the way up. And so I incorporated the girl power movement into my music. Um, and so what it is is all about empowerment of women, empowerment of girls, you know, uh, the message is you can do whatever it is that you want to do. You can be whatever it is that you want to be and never have to sell your soul to do that. Oh my God, you said yeah. a mouthful then. Yes. When you said that, that is so important because in order to live life unlimited or even have any kind of power. You have right. to know that who you are as a person. So tell us a little bit about um, the writing, first of all, because that's pretty much where it starts from an idea. So tell us a little bit about the history of, of your writing of this particular film. So um, for Fiorella, I started off with the idea that everyone has choices in life. And for a lot of our youth, they don't always know that they have a choice in a particular situation. So um, that's where it started. What if someone knew that there was something else out there for them, that they didn't necessarily have to make the wrong decision in a particular moment? Okay, so that's just a little bit of the Melody Tri Show. It gives you an idea of a lot of the different stuff you do. You, uh, most of it is entertainment based. You do uh, go for entertainers, uh, but you also just have people who just have something to say. Yeah. Uh, how well, is it that you find the people that you want to talk to? Well, you know what? I actually, um, because I act as well, I actually meet people, and then it's just people I met along the way that I know that they have a story to tell, mm -hmm. that they actually went through some stuff to get to where they are right now. And then I, I also um, host on the red carpet. So when I meet people on the red carpet, hey, I got a show. I, I would love to have you come on the show and you know tell people how you got to where you are so that somebody else can get to where they need to go by listening to you. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty much what I do. Okay. And then yeah. I have people coming after me too, so you know. Okay, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> you, were, you were telling me just now there's some people that since you have had them on the show have kind of gone off and done their own thing. I mean, you have people who come in, you've already got their thing going, but you kind of push them to that, that next plateau. Yeah, because I want them to see that they're not limited 
by just where they are. No matter where they live, I mean, some type of way you're able to do it. And I think that we all would do a lot more if we just had someone to believe in me and actually tell them that they can do mm -hmm. this. When they see that it's actually an opportunity to be done, then they actually do it. So like four people done got shows of okay. their own. Okay. Uh, now let's talk about making your show. Because being a host, being a producer, first off, being a host, is, you, you're a natural talker. You, you see, you come off very natural on camera, oh, and I appreciate you. that about your show. Um, but there's a lot more to putting together a show than then showing up and, and running your mouth. Um, yes. So from the moment when you got here, tell me about the process from walking in the doors for the first time at Pasadena Media to getting your first episode onto the air. I'm sure it was a smooth, flawless process. <laughs> Actually, it was so much work. <laughs> Because of the fact that I had to, you know, actually find people who believed in what I was doing as well. Mm -hmm. And um, and to see the vision that I had. So it was like actually finding crew, you know, and then because, you know, I, I'm a perfectionist, I actually edit my own stuff. So that takes a lot of time after it's done. Then the pre-production, knowing what I want to say, how I want to say it, and, and what the set look like, finding stuff to go on my set, finding clothes, because I'm a, you know, perfectionist in that too. And, and so it's a lot of work. You know, it's not just, oh, you're up and get a show and boom, boom, boom. It's actually what you put into it is what you actually get. Mm -hmm. And so I want my show to look the best that I can possibly do at this time of my career because to me that's what it is. It's a career pathway to, to get to the next level. And so um, the pre-production, you know, knowing, actually coming here, taking the classes was so helpful. Mm -hmm. Even though I took the video production classes, it was still like a refresher because every place is a little different. Mm -hmm. And so by me taking those classes, it actually let me know, okay, Melody, this is how you need to do your show for this season that your show is in right now. Mm -hmm. So it really helped me a whole lot. And I'm, I'm assuming that part of it is you, you do have a vision for where you're trying to go. I definitely have a vision. You know, <laughs> I have a big vision. Like, I actually see my show international. Mm -hmm. um, I actually see me as a host, you know, all over the world so that people everywhere will be able to view it and know that they can live life unlimited. I don't want to ever, I just want to go as far as I can possibly go, and that's, it's unlimited. It's unlimited. <laughs> like, okay. I, I can't even say how big. And I think it's important to have that vision for your show. But then again, like you said, you have to deal with where your show is right now. Yes. And, and as much as we provide here at the Royal Channel, we do have limited resources. I don't want to put limits on your unlimited show. But you've been able to work within those limits to create something that, that uh, with a lot of work, like you yeah. said, it's a lot of work. But you've been able to create something that, that you are willing to take out there and show, and you, you're getting better at it over time. Because How long have you been doing this now? Uh, a little over a year. Okay. So I, I was So bored. from that very first episode to right now. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I've seen some growth in your show. I've seen how it has improved. But how do, how do you feel about it? Well, for one, the editing has been so much better. Because it used to take me like a week or so maybe two weeks to edit one show. Uh -huh. Now it came down to two hours. Okay. So like, I'm really happy about that. And it has been so good to, I know how the format that I want the show to be in. Okay. So it really helps me a lot to, because I already have an idea what it's gonna be, the intro, the, the exit, everything kind of right. makes sense. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about that after this break. Um, okay. and when we come back, I do wanna talk a bit more about the mechanics of your show, and then I wanna talk about how you feel and about being a member of the Arroyo Channel Band, as I'm calling it for this episode. <laughs> the band, the band. <laughs> okay. Uh, we'll be right back after this break with more from Melody Trice, producer and host of The Melody Trice Show. Bye, Janet. It's nice seeing you again. See you, you a good girl. Just let me know what I can do to help. Well, to help me, she'd have to help every day. Every hour, every ouch, every time my wife calls for help. I mean, maybe she could help me make her lunch. But the crust, all the crust has to be cut off the corners. She could help me run to the doctor for the fifth time this week. Help me with the specialist and the second opinions and the painful paperwork of our paperwork. Help me deal with how hard it is seeing my wife's name on so much paperwork. But this is on me. I'm the only one who can do this, like this, for her. Besides... Take care. We will. 
Janet doesn't like her cooking anyway. Find support for your strength. Visit aarp.org slash caregiving for care guides and community. Uh, and we were just talking about uh, the growth that you've had with your show over the time. You've already talked about how the training kind of helps you to, to learn two, two things. One, you, you, I think you came in kind of knowing what you wanted, but the classes help you to figure out how to put that in the structure that worked for here. Yes. Um, how do you feel about just the overall environment at the Royal Channel? Well, you know what? I love it, actually. Like, I mean, oh, my God, I just feel like just hugging y'all. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it just do. Because I have never been around so many people who want to see me succeed. Mm. It makes a difference when when someone, um, okay, yeah, she want, she want to do something, okay. But actually, seeing what I want to do and me as a diva working with me <laughs> to get it done, I mean, I think that's beautiful. And, and I've never had any problems with getting anything done. Mm -hmm. You know, any vision that I had has always been somebody there to assist me. If it's any question that I, I didn't know something about, nobody looked at me as if um, something's wrong with me because I have that question. And it's mm -hmm. like, truly no, no question is a dumb question. Mm -hmm. It was always like an answer for me. Or, hey, I'll get back with you. So mm -hmm. I'm very appreciative of that. And I would highly recommend anybody to bring this show to the Royal Channel because Pasadena is the bomb. So let, and let's talk about some of the different elements of your program because uh, I've seen, we showed clips of a lot of your in-studio stuff. You also mentioned that you had your YouTube, you have your YouTube channel mm -hmm. and you do red carpet stuff. So how do you tie all those different elements together with your show? Um, well, that the red carpet events are people just like the people that be on my show and they are living their life unlimited. Mm -hmm. So their life unlimited, it's a lot of people in the world would love to be on the red carpet. So when they see these people on the red carpet and they talk to me about whatever the event is, then somebody that's watching it, it kind of, it goes with what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. They're living life unlimited their way and somebody that's watching it want to live life unlimited. So it's, it's pretty much like I'm out and about service in the same way mm -hmm. to me. And uh, when you go out to these events, like how, how, what's the, the response that you get? Because I mean, you said you came here four years ago and now you had here on red carpets talking to people and stuff. So. Oh my God, you know what? It's, I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm just gonna keep it real. It's almost like I'm a magnet or something. <laughs> I'm really like, people, are, I don't know what it is, but they want to interview with me. Mm -hmm. And I make them very, very comfortable because I want to know the real you. Like, I know you came to this carpet with a format of how you want to talk to me. But look, I know you here. Uh, what did you have to do to get to here right now? Did you, you know what I'm saying? Did something mm -hmm. happen on the way here mm -hmm. to the event? And why are you here to support such an event like this? Mm -hmm. And they feel comfortable with me. And it just, I don't know, it makes me feel good. And at first I was like starstruck. I can't lie because a lot of people I met on the carpet, I've always watched them. But now... It doesn't feel like a job or anything. It just feel like, okay, we're here together. Come on here, like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> you know. Okay, and the, uh, let's come back. Let's bring it back into the studio here. Uh, you've talked. To, uh, you've mentioned these things. Now I just want to kind of uh, make it more tangible, if that's the right word, because you've mentioned pre-production. Mm -hmm. uh, you've mentioned post-production, which is the editing side of it, and and obviously there's production in the middle of it. Did you have all of those tools before you came here, or, or is that something you've worked on since you got here? Um, well, I say the pre-production, the, the post-production I've pretty much always did because I've always edited all my stuff, mm -hmm. and I like doing that. I actually, you know, like seeing it. And uh, for one reason, because I get to see how people was looking when they didn't know I was looking. <laughs> Okay. And but anyways, and then the the production part of it, um, I learned more of that when I came here because before I didn't have all the different crew members. It was just pretty much me and maybe one or two other people. Mm -hmm. But now sometimes it's I have sometimes like twelve people volunteer and sometimes it's four people volunteer to help out and so that let me know more how to I guess work with other people. Mm -hmm. So it, it really I don't know, makes a family pretty much more so than just your crew mm -hmm. because that's what we are once we're here working on it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, And you record how many episodes per session? Four. One that's time, ambitious. Yeah, one time I pushed it to five and I think I drove everybody crazy. <laughs> I can tell you for a fact, you did. We talked about that for about a good two weeks. 
So I was like, oh, never again will okay. I do uh, five shows. And that's, that's a lot of work as a producer, but it's also a lot of work as a host because you got to talk to people for five episodes. Now, yeah. we've established you, there's no lack of talking on your part. Yeah. Um, and I don't stop either. <laughs> I, I noticed. <laughs> <laughs> um, let, let's, let's tie it all back, bring it down. If, if there was anything that you wanted to say to somebody out there who's wanting to live their life unlimited, and wants to be sitting here where you're sitting right now, just knowing what you've told us so far about your journey, coming from the base and ending up out here in California, living unlimited, what would be the one thing you'd recommend for people to do? It's to know who you are. And when you know who you are, not what people say you are, what people say you can do, but believe in yourself. And when you believe in yourself, there's nothing that you can't do. All right. You heard it here from Melody Trice. Uh, when we come back after the break, we will actually have another guest, and we're going to learn a bit more about putting it all together. I want to thank you very much for thank being you. here, Melody. Appreciate it. And you guys can find her on the Arroyo Channel. We'll be right back after this break. <laughs> I'm a retired school psychologist, and helping people was my thing. I was very independent and thought I could take care of myself. I fell and I had to have Meals on Wheels. After my stroke, when Meals on Wheels started, I was on the other end of the stick, so to speak. Meals on Wheels, coming to my door as someone who's housebound, having someone check on me, assures me that I'm not forgotten. Meals on Wheels has given me a mode of freedom that I wouldn't have otherwise. We are the clients. We are the clients. We are the clients of Meals on Wheels. America, let's do lunch. One in six seniors faces the threat of hunger, and millions more live in isolation. Drop off a hot meal and say a quick hello. Volunteer by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. Putting a good show together is a team effort. It requires planning, execution, and occasionally a little cleanup work on the tail end. We have lots of volunteers committed to helping you to do that, and some of them come with very valuable experience in the business. I'm here now with Butch Thompson, one of our pros who can help you get your show done. All right, Butch. All right. What's going on, going? Chevy? Not much. All right. Okay. Uh, they're telling me I don't have a whole lot of time, so I okay. want to dig in. Because you've been doing this for a minute. You're not new to, new to the TV thing. 25 years. 25 years. Yeah. And, and you've covered, uh, I mentioned in the interview with Melody, we've got pre-production, production, post-production. Post -production. Yeah. You've, you've done all three all of All three of them and continually do them to the day. Okay. So where do you, how is it that you can contribute to, say, some of these just coming in Rattle Street? Because you're very familiar with how we operate here. Right, right. At the Arroyo right. Channel, at Pasadena Media. Right, right, right. So you staffer, volunteer, producer, director. At, uh, we don't have time to go down the list. Right, we don't. So I'm going to let you talk. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, well, you know, I, right now I think my role basically is when a lot of new producers come in and there's a thing of fear that's about them, you know what I'm saying? Like the sharks are circling and they don't know what is what and what is what. Well, I'm here, you know what I'm saying? Ask the question if you may. The staff is doing their thing. They're trying to do everything to make it uh, facility-wise as convenient for them. But then, there's, you know, there's that one person that just needs to hold their hand. Mm -hmm. So that's what I do, you know what I mean? You know, this is, this is how this goes, this is how that goes. You know what I mean? If you have a question, ask Aaron. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That and say a lot. Else, <laughs> there, there you go. If there's a question he doesn't want to do, right, right, tell right. Who to go, go ask Aaron. You and know then, what I'm you know, saying? And you so. also have those questions that yeah, do require yeah. official answer. But a, a lot of times, and I think this is one of those areas that you definitely help out a lot of producers, is trying to get it out of the brain and onto the screen. Yeah. Um, we go through it with the post -product, pre production, post production. And one of the things we always tell producers is they really do need to get with somebody who knows how it's done. I typically want them to hook up with a director who can tell them, you need this, this, and this to do what you're talking about. Yeah. Or somebody to just tell them, you just can't do that. It's right. not going to happen here. If you want right. to do that, well, you can, but it's going to cost you $12 million. And we got to go exactly. and build it. Exactly. Um, so it's, how, I guess I just answered my own question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I think that's one of those areas that, that you can you come in and you play a role. Because like I said, professional, you 25 years in the game. This, yeah. is, this is not new. Yeah. So how, how are, when those people come in and ask questions, what are some of the things you typically find? that? Well, you, you know, the do? ideas that they have is all great. You know what I'm saying? Like you said, you know, you just throw it out there. You spur it out there. What we do, you know what I'm saying, is that we put in a night meets package. 
You know what I'm saying? A lot of times producers will want to go out the box. You know what I mean? And it's just not happening. You know, so, you know, there's a technical end of it. There's a creative in it to it. But it all has to fit into a nice, you know what I mean, package. So that's what we okay. really, really like. And, and where do you think that you're strongest in, in that, the creative technical? I think and, and my strength is in editing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, there's a certain format and the attention span of a person. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? I like to put PSAs in my shows because a person's attention span can be uh, only so long. You know what I mean? I love to keep the show in a nice nice rhythm, you know what I'm saying? I think that's very important in a mm -hmm. show. Mm -hmm. Timing is very important in mm -hmm. a show. So all of those things, I think that's where I like sell it. And, uh, okay, and I then and when you're doing a lot, of the, a lot of the editing on the shows, where are some of the areas you think a lot of producers could improve so they, they actually can move to the next level in their production? Well, you know, the funny thing about that is, is that uh, I'm taking a lot of my producers, and I have four of them, I'm taking them outside of the studio in a sense mm -hmm. of, you know, mm -hmm. we, as you've seen some of the shows I've been working on, we're going to do some remote shoots, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, which is a little different, you know what I'm saying, it's a little different flavor that what Passion or, or an extension of what the Royal Channel does, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. a lot of times we're doing that, you know what I'm saying. Um, with the producers I have now, I'm trying to teach them, okay, to do a show in segments, you know what I'm saying, be quick about it, be quick about it, be quick about it, and then we'll go to a break, mm -hmm. as opposed to trying to think out what you want to say for 28 minutes. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's a long time to yeah, hear somebody yeah. trying to construct a thought. Okay, right. I'm totally out of time, but I do want to ask one last question. Do you recommend people use a facility like the Royal Channel to do what they want? Oh, doing? definitely, definitely. It's a great place. It's a great learning place. Uh, that's what Aaron says, and that's really what it is. Okay. You want to, if you come here, as you know, there has been people that have come here and have gone on to do great things. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. Yeah. It's a great place to start out if you want to go. I recommend it to anybody. Okay, so you heard it from the professional. It's not just me out here every time trying to convince you guys to come into the studio and do something. The pro said it, so it's out of my hands. Okay, that's all the time we have for this edition of the Royal Profiles. I hope you found it informative and entertaining. If you're interested in learning more, you can find Pasadena Media through all the usual social media platforms. For those of you who want to do more than like, follow, and subscribe, head over to our website and you can get involved. As you've already heard, we offer training for anyone interested in learning about television production, whether you're interested in pushing the buttons or pushing your point of view. It all starts with an orientation and tour. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you on the Arroyo Channel.